So we're going to look at enzyme nomenclature really quick. Uh, traditionally, enzymes were named by uh, giving them some kind of common name and then adding the suffix of A-S-E. So uh, you would have something like a phosphatase, so phosphatase, and you would know that it was an enzyme by the A-S-E ending. The first part of the uh, name would usually be the substrate that the enzyme acted upon, so in this case it would be a phosphate, and I could have got the T in there too. It had been a phosphate, and then the ASC ending. However, there were several other enzymes that either they didn't, uh, their, the beginning of their name didn't, uh, catal so catalase, let's just take catalase for example, uh, it acts on hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, so catal Cattle doesn't say anything about hydrogen peroxide, so there's, so there's there were some common names that didn't fit, and then there were some other uh, things that didn't have the ASC ending at all. Th uh, enzymes like uh, like uh, trypsin, trypsin, and pepsin, uh, enzymes in your stomach, and so they didn't have any type of ASC ending, and so uh, naming enzymes for a long time was just a mess. And then there was an enzyme commission that decided that they could classify all enzymes into six different categories, and then they could break those categories down into subclasses and then into sub-subclasses. So those seven, the six categories in, include category number one is oxidoreductases, category two transferases, category three hydrolases, uh, four lysases, five isomerases, and six are ligases. And so you can see an example up here in the chart of these numbers that, that are assigned. And so take example uh, category number two, which are transferases. And then if, and then if you look down at sub subclass uh, seven down here, these are transferases that uh, transfer phosphate-containing groups. And then if you look at sub-subclass number one, these are uh, transferases that can uh, transfer phosphate-containing groups with an alcohol group as an acceptor. And so there's, uh, there's a couple of enzymes that fall under that. So for example, 2.7.1.1 is a non-specific hexokinase, so a hexo, hexokinase, and what this does is it will transfer a phosphate group to any uh, six-ringed sugar, so six-ring uh, hexo. Uh, then you have 2.7.1.2, uh, which is glucokinase, so glucokinase, and that transfers a phosphate group to the six, uh, the the number six uh, carbon, the number six alcohol on a glucose ring, and so it's actually a very specific hexokinase. Whereas uh, hexokinase in general is non-specific; it doesn't care exactly what kind of uh, what kind of six-member ring it is. And so the the official name for the two point seven point one point one, the official name is. Uh, ATP dehexo 6 phosphotransferase. So it's it's saying that it has to be a D uh, a, a D isomer of the, of a hexose, which is a six uh, six carbon sugar. So it can be any six carbon sugar in the D form, uh, and it uses ATP to transfer a phosphate to the number six alcohol, and and so. Uh, and then the glucose form alone is the 2.7.1.2. And so it's actually very cumbersome to name and to remember, and it's all kind of trivial. And so for the most part, um, I will just use common names if I talk about a specific enzyme. So sometimes an enzyme needs uh, something added to it in order to, uh, to work. So for example, you might have a an enzyme that has an active site right here, but its active site won't fit the substrate molecule unless it has um, some type of uh, activator added here. And or or else, another possibility is that um, this uh, this molecule won't break apart unless there's something that covalently bonds to it, some kind of cofactor, coenzyme. And so they, they work in a number of different ways. Uh, many, uh, 
For example, sometimes you have a cofactor, which may be like some kind of metal ion. So we'll, we'll put a plus here for metal ion. And you might have a molecule that uh, needs to be broken apart. And whenever this metal ion binds to this uh, covalently, it causes this to break apart. And as soon as that's broken apart, this metal ion will then break away from, from the, uh, the substrate. And so the cofactors are are uh, used, coenzymes are used for a lot of different things, uh, or and not for a lot of different things, they're all used for the same thing to help the enzyme do its job, but they're used in a lot of different ways. Um, and oftentimes the coenzyme may be uh, covalently bonded to the enzyme itself. In this case, um, whenever an enzyme requires a bonded cofactor, this is called a, whenever it's added, it's, it's called a prosthetic group prosthetic group. And whenever it's binded to the enzyme, bound to the enzyme, the enzyme is called a holoenzyme. Holoenzyme. And whenever it's not bound to the enzyme, whenever it's missing, it's called an apo, an apoenzyme. Apo is the Greek word that means away from. Whenever I, I was taking a Greek class, I remembered uh, this because apo, the apple, falls away from the tree. So I mentioned cofactors and I also mentioned coenzymes. So the difference between a cofactor and a coenzyme is coenzymes are typically organic molecules. They may be um, they may be other enzymes or, sm or small carbon containing molecules but cofactors tend to be metals. And just an example of uh, some cofactors there's a uh, there's iron two plus which uh, is required by cytochrome cytochrome oxidase and uh, so iron three plus is required by catalase catalase and then a, an example of a coenzyme would be like flavin flavin adenine I'm just gonna abbreviate flavin adenine dinucleotide, FAD, and it's used by the succinate dehydrogenase, succinate dehydrogenase uh, enzyme, and it's uh, basically, it transfers hydrogen atoms. It, it, it's basically used to transfer, um, to transfer hydrogen atoms from one place to another. And there are several, there's, there's probably hundreds, I don't know how many, but there are several, several other coenzymes and cofactors that you could discuss or look at, but we're not going to do that. And one other thing before I uh, close this video out is I wanted to mention that the chart that I got for the Enzyme Commission numbers, I got that from uh, the Biochemistry by Garrett and Grisham, the fifth edition, and so I just want to give credit uh, so that I'm, I'm not plagiarizing.